welcome to the cauldron. Yes, the sick and ill cauldron, where we wash our hands and we don't touch our face. Still having trouble not touching my face. So much trouble, my nose is so itchy. It's been a hell of a week. It's only been a week. (laughs) Right now, in Australia, 5,795 cases, but we've tested over 300,000 people. So that's kind of good, actually. It's not too bad, yeah. And unfortunately, 39 people have died. Yes, this is correct. But still comparatively better. I think in part it is due to our lifestyle and the fact that it's summer. Yeah, definitely. Like, I know that I personally am not tip-top healthy shape and I'm not as active as I potentially could be. However, because I live in Australia and I do get out sometimes, get a bit of vitamin D, go for a bit of a walk every now and again, and it's summer, so, you know, we're not cold piled on top of each other inside. Yeah, social distancing is easier. And when it's hot, the virus dies a little bit more quickly than Mm. when it's chilly. Or that too, yes. Mm. That's why regular cold and flu season happens because in summer the virus doesn't pass to so many people because if you touch a surface, our beautiful sun bakes it off. Yes, indeed. So... It is a fairly scary time, though, because it is a pandemic. Other than for sake of mental health, I went outside with the husband today and we ran a few errands, did a bit of a drive around, and the shops were packed. It was crazy. But after having seen only my husband since I got dropped off by the taxi Friday last, not last week, but the week before, Mm -hmm. so it's just over a week from then, it was nice to get out and go somewhere not my yard. I wish I didn't have to go to the shop so often, but because of all the restrictions now, I have to go back every few days because I can only get two of anything. And if I could buy more stuff, well, if we could all buy what we wanted, there'd be nothing on the shelf, then I could stay at home for longer and I wouldn't have to go back. Thankfully, when the husband went shopping last, I don't think that there was so much in the way of restriction on how much you could buy, or at least the things that he bought, mm-hmm. they weren't, there wasn't a restriction on that, which is really good. So we've been okay food-wise, because we've got stuff in the freezer and stuff in the fridge to be made, made up um, that's still got a couple of days on it. I can buy two of anything. Mm-hmm. I- Two of most of the packaged stuff on the shelves. Unlimited chips and and soft drink. Which is completely helpful. Mm. Two of any type of packet, like two cake packet mixes, two frozen veg, two meat frozen meat pie, two, do you know what I mean? Two jam, two bread, Mm. two anything. Then there's the one thing. Because I personally would only need... Uh, yes, you have two children. Yeah. And my one children is in the other house. So. Yeah. So basically all, all I had to do was like buy, instead of going, we're going to eat this all week, which I frequently do, mm-hmm. just to cut down the amount of waste and streamline the thing. I can't mm-hmm. eat one thing all week because then I would need to buy four packets of whatever. We yeah. need to have... Well, damn it, we need to have a varied diet. It's so tiresome. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get that. <laughs> we do a lot of bulk cooking. Or mm. sorry, when the when the child was living here, we did a lot of bulk cooking. So we'd have a couple of days in a row or a few days in a row with the same thing. Yeah. And the option would be you can have this new thing I'm cooking tonight or you can have leftovers or you can be hungry. Good luck. Yeah, nice. uh, Yeah. Frequently it was either leftovers if I was tired or we'd all get in and make something. Yeah. But, yeah, now that it's just the two of us, um, I guess in that way it's, it's easier. We're a bit more fortunate. That we don't need to get quite so much stuff. Yeah, that's that would be so much better. Then I wouldn't have to go. Yeah, I've been going like twice a week, I guess, which is a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, it's made me realise sort of how much I take for granted being able to nip to the shops and, to pick up some milk and come home yeah. with like a dozen other things that yeah, I probably it, don't really need. It does but get cut, anyway. on, cut down on the do- yeah, it cuts down on the dozen other things. But yeah. I did, I did go ahead and remember to purchase chocolate. So I was watching the ABC News update today and I saw the Queensland Health Minister, Dr Young, say that anyone who has symptoms, whether they fell under the previous restrictions, so being overseas Mm -hmm. in the last 14 days, being in contact with someone overseas or being in contact with someone who is confirmed to have coronavirus, they're expanding it because they've found within the three major communities that they've been testing in, being Cairns, Brisbane and the Gold Coast, that there are 30-odd people Mm. who they can't trace back where these people picked up the virus from. Yeah, so she said, I think this is preemptive ahead of local transmission, so I don't see that there'll be a big increase in numbers. See, I think And I hope there's not. I hope there's not a big increase. Yeah, exactly. Because that would be excellent. It means that the little social distancing that we have achieved Mm -hmm. so far is Mm -hmm. working. Yes. And the thing is, all these numbers are, as not the number of people who have it, it's the number Mm. of people who have been tested positive for it. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people who may have it who mm. haven't been tested for whatever reason, be it that they don't think that they're sick or they don't think that they fall into one of the criteria or they've previously asked to be tested and been turned away. That's right. And they're no longer sick. Yeah. I'd like to get a blood test which says, have you ever had it? You know, because I had a cold a couple of weeks ago. Anyway. Yeah. It may not be part of the new coronavirus is the COVID-19, mm. but it also it may have been an incredibly mild form, which if yeah. you did have a mild form of the new coronavirus, that's kind of good because it means you've got antibodies against this one, which means that's right. anything else that comes under this strain or mutates from this particular version of the coronavirus, you will have an easier time fighting it than someone who has definitely not had it. Yeah, never had it. That's right. So let's talk about social distancing and Google's awesome way to check up on us by spying (laughs) on our phones. Yes. Let us talk about that. Ah, yes. So if you go to google.com forward slash COVID-19 forward slash mobility, You get this list of countries, right? And you can download a PDF from any of the different countries. And if you live in the United States, you can actually download your individual states. So looking at Australia, we are doing not great, but pretty good. Notably, the biggest reduction in going places and doing things is actually transit stations. So trains, buses. People are staying well away from them. Well, yeah. I mean, that from going to and from work, I found mm. that people I worked with were driving. Absolutely. As a way of self-isolating because at that point, we were not going to be working from home. Yep. That has now changed and it changed very quickly. But just myself being on public transport Mm -hmm. I was catching the train a bit earlier than I normally would yep and there was definitely fewer people on the train like there was two to three people in a carriage and I think that it's so interesting like you can obviously see if you look at the workplaces which is right below the train stations and compare when the weeks are there's this There's this weekend where people stopped using the train to some extent, but then the people who had to work 
obviously had to work in the city, there's this straight line from the Monday to Friday of the people who just simply still have to take the train in because they have no other way to get their job. And then yeah. after that date, after like March 15 or whatever, it just drops off as well as going to the workplaces drop off as mm. well totally yeah. going down because everybody's been either lost their job or told you must work from home if you can and employers finally went <gasps> fine we have to trust our employees i mean from my experience with two different organizations working from home mm-hmm. i can say that because we're using their hardware so mm-hmm. Uh, in my case, the computer box, Mm -hmm. the PC. So I've got all of the programs loaded on there. I've got all of the key logging and everything that the employer does normally. Yeah. It's all there. I brought it home with me. Mm -hmm. So when I plug my keyboard and screen in, away I go on the work computer. Mm. And then when I want to do my personal stuff outside of work hours, I plug it, plug everything back into my normal computer, and I no oh, longer have the really, key logging. And that physical action is such a good way to make sure you don't get distracted with your personal computer throughout the day. Yeah, because I have my work computer, and I've always brought that to and from my place of work because mm. outside hours work is the norm in my industry. Yeah, if thankfully not, it's not in mine. Yeah, well, if one could not work outside of the workplace in my industry, one would never leave the workplace because there are long hours. Yes, and Um, I do not envy you that. And because there are certain defined moments where I have to, you know, do the thing, but generally Mm -hmm. I could do my work at any time. But that's not healthy. There has to be a defined moment. So what? I've been doing is I turn my home computer off. Mm. I turn the radio on. I turn my work computer on. I make my cup of tea, do whatever. And I do the work for the day, turn my work computer off, go and do something else for a little bit, and then turn my home computer on and I've got that separation because, unfortunately, my work computer and my home computer share a desk because I am limited in space in my house. I just have to get my stuff done. But there are certainly, like when I go on holidays, I go Mm -hmm. on holidays. And when I have a weekend, I have a weekend. But when I sit down to do work, I have to sit down and do work for a couple of hours stretch because first I need to get my brain back into where I am yeah, um, and sort of focus on that, I can't mix the two. So, But I do get to choose when that actually occurs. Yeah. I, I can't choose when I do my work, which is a bit weird. But because I'm doing essentially accounts payable, I can't take it home. It's not something that I can actually do outside of my normal work hours yeah oh, I mean I I if I wanted to but I have to get approval for that and I don't want to worry about getting approval for that because it, I just don't need that yeah fair enough and I think a lot of I really hope obviously not all industries but I really hope some industries think to themselves gee I uh This is actually working out Mm. and if I actually get – I could save so much money on inner city rent Mm. and I could pay my people a little bit more (laughs) to allow them to have maybe a three-bedroom instead of a two-bedroom so they could have a home office and that would work out cheaper for me. Let's get on that now. That's not how it works. (laughs) No, um, they just save the money without paying you anymore and expect you to oh, deal yeah. with the home office stuff yourself. Yeah. I mean, it was my choice to live in the house that I live in and mm. I've just got to suck it up and yeah. have my own strategies on how I separate 
my work from my home. Yeah, yeah. I but find I'm proud that, of us yeah. as a country. Yeah, I mean, once we've got our act into gear, mm. everything happened very quickly. I mean, from yeah. my perspective, we were out of the office in two hours. Yeah. Everyone was yeah. being sent home. Everyone was sent home with a cab charge. Everyone got the help that they needed to disassemble their desk as much as necessary, get rid mm. of any perishables that they had at their desk. Because let's face it, we spend a lot of time at work. Yeah. If you work in an office, you go there, you spend a bulk portion of your day there, and then you go home. So I find that I tend to keep coffee or cordial or shelf stable snacks in my drawer so yeah. that I've got things that I might need on a day-to-day basis ready at hand because unfortunately yeah. working in town means that if you go shopping in town for your lunch you are paying the premium for the privilege of working in town yes wow which is a whole nother rant You know, if you scroll down in the report for Australia, Mm -hmm. you go down and you actually have a look at who's doing well and who's doing badly. Mm. The ACT are doing very badly. If you look at the statistics for parks, Mm. for parks, it's gone up. Yeah, that's a bit weird. I mean... (sighs) Oh, they're all exercising individually around. I mean, there aren't that many people in the ACT. It is a big old nothing space with politicians in it and not much more. Well, but even why the politicians are you going to the park aren't, more. But politicians aren't even there because we're not sitting because there's a pandemic. Mm. However, it was also quoted that Scott Morrison has declared that politicians will not be receiving a pay cut. They're going ahead with their normal annual pay rise. Oh, I see, but they're not working. No. I see. They don't have to go on the JobKeeper allowance? (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, God. Anyway, I think we should move away from this and towards something a little bit more positive. Towards joy. So this is my favourite thing that I've come across on Facebook recently. It's pretty cute. Uh, It's from the UK. So the sheep have tails and (laughs) they're playing on a merry-go-round and it's adorable and they're just running around in circles. It's so sweet. I know. It's so wholesome and I... I'm glad for it. We need this in this time. Absolutely. Sheep have souls. Don't eat them, even though they're delicious. Well, the particular type of sheep, these are raised for their fleece rather than their meat. They're not like the merino that is bred for both. Yeah. Yeah. With merinos, they're bred to be, they're bred to be eaten as well as to be shorn every year. Mm -hmm. With these sheep, they're more bred to be shorn or to have their fleece combed off. Mm -hmm. I love this one from the Brisbane Times, a scientist. She was uh, advised to wear a mask. Um, But, you know, masks are so hard to get these days. So she made her own and she's got avocados. She's got cutie um, science fiction fabric she's got so many of them they're so cute and she's got uh, actually I want to say she's got heaps of them so she's just wearing them I guess and swapping them out um, well she's also got a a chronic health condition that she manages so Mm. she would be going through masks a lot more anyway yeah definitely I think it's lovely I'm definitely going to use some of my cute, cute fabric to make masks and share them with my friends. That sounds like an excellent plan. Something else that I came across on the internet that just made my heart sing was there's this dude who was going out for a bit of a run and his mates said, hey, 
you've got a Spider-Man costume. Can you just nip down to my place on your run and Mm -hmm. wave hello to my kids? Because, you know, we're in quarantine. It's winter. It's boring. It's grey. And they're small children. And so he did. And then he saw other kids watching him. So he Spider-Man's up to them and takes a selfie with them. Oh, so cute. On Facebook. A selfie through the window. A selfie through the window. Oh, so cute. I was like, selfie? Yes. No, wait, through the window. Yes. Definitely. And oh, he uh, even posts messages to kids and stuff. Oh, I heard it's, no. it's your birthday. Oh, my spider senses are telling me it's your birthday soon. And it's it's adorable. He's gone whole hog. Oh, that is cute. Well, my neighbour tonight invited me to this group called Bin Isolation Outing. So we never go out anymore, but our bins do. So when you put your bin out the night before bin day, you should dress up in your absolute best outfit, hair done, makeup on to take your bin out. I have been doing full makeup, Mm. uh, some hair and all of the clothing required as if I was <laughs> leaving the, the house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as if I was leaving the house to go to work just to, yep. as part of my commute, if you will. Huh. I have, I have said to people uh, on the Zoom, or not on the Zoom meeting, on the Teams meeting, um, mm. I'm going to turn my camera on in a second. Just, just wait one moment. Step, 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 grab shawl, put shawl over shoulders, step, 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 sit down, turn camera on. I'm ready now. You didn't want to see me in a singlet. (laughs) So, you know. That sort of breaks the illusion. It does. I've also started a meeting and gone, oh, crap, there's my shirt from yesterday. Drag that on, sat down, started me. Hang on. I had a meeting with these people yesterday. This is the same shirt. Oh, I hope no one remembers. Like, <laughs> I don't I think people old. notice. But there's there's three there's three hundred thirteen thousand people in this bin isolation outing, and what you're supposed to do is like go out there, do the bin, and then po- be creative and post a photo to cheer us all up. And some of the top photos are seriously somebody three D printed Iron Man. Oh, no, 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 the Terminator skeleton and posed it taking the bin out. That's Somebody's doing the Marilyn Monroe crazy. bin. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. It is It is lovely to see the positive things that are coming out because people are responsibly social distancing and not wanting to lose their sense of humour or have yeah. their mental health suffer for doing the right thing. Something that I've seen do the rounds on Facebook is we are isolating Hmm. for love. We are staying away from friends and family. Yeah. And we're catching up with them online because we love them. That is nice. But related to taking the bin out, uh, people have been dressing up in costumes and having a photo shoot in their driveway. Mm. So people are spending more time together. So as a family unit, so as a group of yep. people who live together and needing to spend more time together, people are making it fun, which is wonderful. And they're sharing it to their friends, family on social media, but also with That's the wider cool. world. Oh, hashtag the driveway project. Copy, yeah. paste. Totally adorable. Now, something, if you have a memory that is good, you might remember the year was 2017, back in the days when we could still go outside. A time (laughs) when BBC Dad and his delightful family were basically family of the year. In a world. (laughs) time when we could go Um, outside. Basically what happened is he was talking serious business 
economics stuff about South Korea on a live cross. He was ostensibly in an office, which is actually a bedroom, and his kids came in and interrupted the interview. Aww. And it was adorable. And his wife came in and ushered them out and the older one came back in and did a bit of a sachet. And he's <laughs> like sort of putting up his hand and sort of going, you can't see this. I'm focused and serious <laughs> business-like. And it was it was adorable. But they're at it again. This time on purpose. So the whole family have sat in for the interview about coronavirus in South Korea because it's a mixed family. He's from the UK. His wife is from South Korea. They live in South Korea Mm -hmm. and COVID-19 is happening. The UK wants to know what's happening in South Korea about this. And so he's brought the whole family into the office. And, yeah, it's adorable. But on less adorable, I think you were going to talk about people who are breaching social distancing rules. So, if you've been uplifted and joy is filling your heart and you don't feel like coming back down into the seedy reality of stupidity, that that is the other side of being told to socially isolate, tune out now. Go to our Patreon and donate money and leave because (laughs) the rest of this episode is going to be the cauldron of Fuck off, you idiot! <laughs> yeah, because people are dumb. Fair, fair warning. So, did you hear about the car rally that went on, regardless of any laws? I know. We're not supposed to be doing car rallies of the hooning variety in the first uh, place. 150 and cars? That's just a lot of stupid all in one place and I I understand they got a bunch of people got fined 58 people got fined but 150 150 cars cars. it's pretty good I mean obviously they didn't have a massive group of people so I'm glad they got 58 that's pretty decent but it's about a third so that's not too bad Only if there was one car per person. I reckon some of those cars would have had four people in it. Some would have had just two or one. But I'd say conservative figure of 300 human beings. Potentially, yeah. Outside Rochdale. And people who are caught by police outside their homes without Mm. a, quote unquote, valid reason face an individual fine of $1,334. And I like how the Queensland Premier has said, like, firstly, we want to help people. Firstly, we want to, like, re-educate people. And fines are a last resort. But I'm pretty sure if you're in a public gathering gathering of 300 people, you don't need a gentle hand to begin with. And I'm glad they got as many people as they did. So similarly in the United States, There's a whole movement of pastors refusing to follow social distancing laws, refusing to stop mass gatherings for church. God will not save you from the COVID. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. Right. If you genuinely, genuinely believe in the Lord, that is fine yeah believe all you like from my christian days i remember this little phrase it is said that god helps those who help themselves and if you do believe in god you also have a responsibility to believe that you should take care of yourself and each other and your wider community by staying at home this Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk has said, stay within your village, Mm -hmm. shop within your village, socialise within your village as much as possible. So be in your local area, exercise in your local area. Don't go up or down the coast. It's not necessary. Mm. At the moment, we need to stay as close to home as possible so that we don't spread or potentially spread COVID-19 to 
people in our community who are at risk. That's right. We don't want to say, oh, well, people of a certain age group or people who have disabilities or people who have a chronic mm. illness are more likely to die and that's okay. I am not okay with that. Yeah. How, how about these people that you told me that were actually driving over the barriers between New South Wales and Queensland? Uh, they've been driving around the temporary barriers because they deserve to go to their holiday homes up up oh the coast or down the coast. Because so now we're moving need... into wankers and their holiday homes. Well, this is they want to socially distance and socially isolate themselves mm. somewhere nice. So this is people who have money. Yeah, yeah, of course, taking because these are people. Away from town and yeah. going to a secondary residence and Anastasia Palaszczuk has come out and said no mm. that is not your normal place of residence there is no reason for you to go there yeah there are probably less resources in that area stay at home yeah well it's happening in Queensland it's happening up and down the New South Wales coast. And yep. there's also um, an article from Reuters, which I found, because UK holiday, holiday homeowners are doing the same thing. And British people are planning to sit out the coronavirus epidemic in their holiday homes. They are facing a backlash from locals over concern that they could spread the virus and overload rural health systems. So funny. Rich mm. people are assholes everywhere. Yay. It's so disappointing. If you can afford a holiday home, your home back in the city is probably nicer than the only home that many people have back in the city. And you mm. can deal with it. Yeah. Shelter in place means you. That's right. Not just the plebs. This is a boomer thing. Oh, yeah. those rules don't apply to us. And they're also the people who are saying, oh, well, you can't pay the rent, so you mm. should withdraw your super or you should leave yeah. the rental property. Thankfully, though, ASIC has, uh, the Australian Securities and Investments Commission has come out saying real estate agents cannot give you financial advice if they mm. try to tell you to withdraw your super to pay your rent report them to us we would be very interested in hearing about that ah uh, yes that's very interesting actually because the real estate agent which manages our home that we own mm -hmm. um, has said there's still no law about stopping evictions so as of right now if you need to evict somebody because they're not paying rent then you can because there's no law been written for it yet and that is just a dick move. Yes. And the other thing that the emails have said was, if somebody is not paying you rent, let us know uh, and we'll talk to them about how they can actually get the $500 payment. And that's going to fully cover rent in, in in most houses where we oh, are in our home. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, major cities. It's a small city. Um, well, yeah. the thing is, the RTA... .qld.gov.au has something on their website from yep. the 3rd of April and it's got information for tenants. They've got hotlines set up. You can mm. text message them and they have health advice linked on their website as mm. well regarding paying rent. Yeah. And the coronavirus. Yep. I mean, personally, but it's not legislated yet, and they can't legislate. So the RTA can't weird. legislate. However, the uh, Australian Securities and Investments Commission are standing by what the RTA is saying. Yeah, I know it's weird. I get these emails because I'm ready to email back and go, "Hey, if they need a break, just so long as I can get." my bank to give me a break I'm all good but anyway well banks are holding out on that because they don't want to give landlords 
a reprieve until mm -hmm. landlords can prove that they can be decent human beings and give tenants a reprieve. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of get that in one way, uh, you know, prove oh. good behaviour first. However, yeah, it it's hard. Yeah, some landlords would just keep just keep collecting the rent no matter what. And there's been mm. plenty of letters sent out to renters um, mm. by various landlords to say, you must keep paying your rent regardless. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that. And if you, as a investor, mm. cannot afford to lose money on your investment for any period of time, then you should not have invested that money to start with. Because That's investing true. is a gamble. Yes. And you should only gamble with what you can afford to lose. Yeah. If you're wealthy enough to have a uh, a house over there with somebody renting it, regardless mm. of if it's your only house or your second house or whatever, and you're mm. so bad with money that you do not keep yourself saved somewhere over there, a couple of months spare cash, you know, mm. In an offset account, for example, mm -hmm. you're a shit human being. You need to stop living up to your means and realise that's right. Well, up, like up to or beyond, right on yeah. the edge of your means, just yeah. pull your shit back a little bit. Just yeah. don't buy that extra car. Just go out <laughs> a little bit less. Keep yourself yeah. a bubble because anybody who has a house like over there earning mm. rent definitely has the ability to get themselves a little bit of breathing room by saving and carefully managing their money. So, yeah, I have oh, very definitely. little little empathy for those people. No, um, I also have little empathy. Yeah. Hey, how about this tiny little town in Texas who are going to start fining people who don't wear masks when they're outside their house? Oh, uh, yes, Laredo, Texas. Yes, a tiny little city. Mm. Um, it will require every resident older than five years old to wear some sort of mask when going out in public, and that includes when going to the store or even pumping gas. Don't you think that's a problem considering careful mask use is actually very important because if you have a poorly fitted mask, if you have a mask that you need to touch to readjust all the time, that's actually worse than nothing. Yeah, because it's encouraging you in that way to touch your face. Mm. Uh, what masks should be doing is making it so you're less likely to touch your face. And yeah. there's also a way of putting on and taking off a mask, which yes. I don't think hands. a lot of people would know. Wash your hands. Put the mask on. Wear the mask for 20 minutes. Wash your hands. Take Lean the mask over off. as if you are going to vomit. Yes. Then take, take your mask off. Take the mask off from the back to the front. Never touch the front of the mask. Put it hmm. in a, if it's a fabric mask, in a bag that is clean on the outside, in a bag to be washed. Don't touch. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands again. Get the fresh mask from the different bag. Put it on your face. There's a lot of hand washing in these steps, right? There but is. If you're going to get a mask, you need to get five of them and that will last you about an hour and a half. That's not a lot of time. No. I, I worked it Which out. Is... If you're wearing it for 20 minutes, it's going to last you one hour and 40 minutes of outside of the house time if you have five. But a lot of the time that you're outside of the house, you wouldn't need to wear it with the social distancing. As long, If you're go um, going to be spending a period of time where you're going to be potentially closer than a metre and a half mm. to two metres from someone, then that's when you would need to wear a mask. But if you're yeah. driving yourself to the shop in your personal car, yeah. You don't need to be wearing a mask in the car. No, not during that period of time. Drive to the shops. I'm getting out of the car. I put ice cold on my hands to begin with mm -hmm. and I leave my vehicle. Mm -hmm. Then when I get back into my vehicle after doing the shopping or whatever, I put ice cold on my hands again before mm -hmm. I drive home to try to keep my car virus free. Okay. Yeah, that, that does make sense. I mean, I 
keep hand sanitizer in my bag. So mm. getting in and out of the car, I'm not so worried about the hand sanitizer. But if mm. I'm about to go into a shop, I'll hand sanitize. Yeah. Um, if I need to touch stuff in the shop, I'll do that. And then I'll hand sanitize. When I hand my purchase to the shop assistants, I'll, uh, after that, I'll hand sanitize and then get my wallet out, mm. make the payment, pick everything up, sanitize on my way out of the shop. Yeah. I try to. Again, go... I get more lung infections than you. Yeah. Do. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think I try to take this period of not touching my face time, right, between getting out of the car and then getting back to the car. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's this safe space in my car. I don't know. But, you know, it's summer too. The car's been sitting there for three hours. It's probably baked off all of the coronavirus because it gets really hot. Yeah, this is this is true. But the this homemade face mask thing, you know, people have started to say how to make them, how to make them, but there's not enough information about how to actually use them, right? Yeah. Um, and there, there's a reason why you wear that any mask for 20 minutes. There's a reason why you wear that homemade mask for 20 minutes and it's what you said before about moisture. Mm -hmm. Because the COVID-19, like all coronaviruses, live in moisture. And Mm. so a certain level of temperature and moisture is ideal. Mm. When it gets too hot, when it gets too dry or too cold, then as a virus it will start to die. And then I've also read yes you wash it and the detergent should remove all of the germs from that but as an extra precaution either if it's rainy into the tumble dryer and the heat will kill any further viruses and then finally if no tumble dryer ironing it so make it out of stuff that can be ironed at a fairly high temperature to just make sure that everything on there is dead before you consider it to be clean again and ready to go back on your face Oh, definitely. I've got some Kowai superhero fabric and I have been saving it. And I think now is the perfect time to break some out and make a couple of cute Kowai masks. Oh, definitely. Definitely is now the time. Yeah. And as, as the episode may be wrapping up, I'm going to say this. If you contact us in any way, and let me know that you're listening. I'm going to send one handmade face mask to somebody who acknowledges and our existence. We will use the name that you nominate to yes. let all of our listeners know on the next podcast. Yes. Also, I would like to end on a light note because we've been a little bit ranty with uh, a link mm-hmm. to the New Zealand police. They have a COVID-19 message oh. with uh, one of their staff members and is gorgeous. You just oh. need to, to listen. Take a minute out of your day and, and just watch this video. It's beautiful. Uh, correction, hmm. one minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> oh, it's well <laughs> worth it. Okay, I'm listening to it now. Okay. Oh, my gosh, that accent. Oh, yes, I love it. We have the socials, which you can use to contact us and receive one homemade by me, one Kwai superhero fabric face mask, absolutely not guaranteed to be to save you from coronavirus at all, but guaranteed to have been in the post for a few days. And you will so, look stylish. Yeah, so stylish. I'll I'll put a photo of it on our Twitter when I finish making it. Excellent. So you can find us on Twitter at Cauldron of. We are Cauldron of All Things on Patreon. We are Cauldron of All Things on Libsyn. And we are Cauldron of All Things on Facebook please hit us up let us know that you're listening go into the draw to win we will 
draw that winner and announce it on our next podcast. Yay. And stay healthy. Oh, good times. Good times and adieu. Ciao.